Okay guys, back with the Outer Circle, and this is the part two to building lists to themes. So the first episode I did in this, we uh, did it over live stream, but I'm not doing that today because I'm sort of in and out of the room and uh, don't want to interrupt the stream too much. So instead I'll just be doing this one uh, off the cuff, but based on the comments, both the live chat and the uh, permanent comments that are on the previous video, and going through some of the requests in there and seeing what people have put in, what they want to try and do. Uh, as usual, there'll be some rights of war, uh, but none of these lists are being designed with alternate force orgs generally. Uh, we're not trying to be super competitive here either. Uh, really just want to try and have a bit of fun with it all. Try and create something that's unique, uh, can play on the tabletop is not limited to only losing its games, but also is not going to be going around making your opponent feel bad because it wins every game, uh, hands down, just because of the type of list you've created. So in general, the way I like to construct this is I'll have the must-takes, which is the top category. That's things like you, you must take one HQ, two troops. Ideally in the must-takes, I then start to include additional units which are also scoring. My rule of thumb is an additional scoring unit per 500 points once you hit uh, over 1,000 points. The level 2 is the next thing I will generally try and take. So after I've fulfilled my basic requirements in any list, you get a level 2. Something that can kill Terminators, uh, can kill something like Castellax, Monstrous Creature... Level 3, that's your anti-tank dreadnoughts. You'll often find that level 2 and level 3 cross over, but if I have to pick between the two at a low level game or low points game, I generally will lean towards level 2 because a level 3 unit, like something like a Leviathan dreadnought, is very unlikely to pop up sub 1200 points. If it does, the person's not really playing the game the sort of way I think the game should be played. Not that they're wrong, not that I'm right, but I just wouldn't be a game I'd be interested in playing. Level 3, of course, is anti-aircraft slash flying monstrous creatures. A much less common, therefore it's right down the bottom of my priorities list, but I think, especially once you get up to around 2,000 points, you have to cater for this scenario, because you will start to see aircraft at 2,000 points. So, I will generally uh, move units uh, into... Uh, and out of this, so for example, here's Linnaean Terminators. I could put them into this list here, as I so desire. And keep in mind, I people note on the last video, they went, oh, you're using a Legion champion, not a Master of the Legion. Da, da, da. I will usually put in a unit that I've just picked off my list of units, and I will say exactly what that unit is. So in the last video, I said, let's just use the Legion Centurion model. Or champion model to represent something like a Delegatus console. So keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, <laughs> don't don't feel like you need to go into comments and go, well, actually, Marco, you didn't say uh, a Master of the Legion. It's there. It's there in the fine print. Okay, so uh, going through the previous video, one of the earlier comments that I had in the video is for someone wanting to see a Brethren of Iron. Now, Brethren of Iron is an interesting right of war, and there's two ways you can go about this. You can either go for a legion that's built around it. So a good example of that would be something like the Iron Warriors or the Iron Hands. Both of them have lots of access to Cortex controllers easily, and tech marines and such in their armies really sink in nicely. The other option is going for a generic legion trying to pull off the same thing, which is doable, but obviously they'll be worse at it. So... I suppose the first one I would gravitate towards would be doing something like an Iron Warriors list, using it, or an Iron Hands list. So we'll go that route. I think we'll do... I think we'll do... Oh, it's a tough one. We'll go Iron Hands, because they just don't get enough love. So, first thing we're going to need is we're going to need our two troops and a HQ. Uh, as part of this right of war, of course, we have a few additional little things we've got to look at. So, to take the Bright of War, we're going to need a Master of the Legion. So, we're probably looking at taking an Iron Father. And we also want to get a Cortex Controller onto this Iron Father. And we probably want to be taking something like a... Just thinking, probably a, a Tech Marine or a Legion Tech Marine of some kind. 
probably go for the full on uh, master of the forge, the forge father, uh, right hand man, because the HQ option is really going to help pulling this off because he's got that just bit more survivability. So with that in mind, we will head down that route. So HQs and troops. Let's see what I've got that I can pull from here. So I think a Praving Console is definitely going to make it into here. So we'll put him in the list. And he will go in here. And he's going to go in there along with his uh, Robo Bunny Minders. Get a Tech Marine in there. So that'll be a Master of the Forge. And of course, we want to try and find ourselves a HQ. Do I have the Iron Hand special HQ in my list? No, I'm not seeing the one in Terminator armor, so we'll just go a second one of that Tech Marine. So keep in mind, one here is the uh, Master of the Legion, and also the Iron Father. Drop this text size down a little bit so I can fit it better. Apologies, guys. Okay. Should look something like that. Now, for our troops. Iron Hands have very tough troops, so the choice is Breaches or Tactical Marines. And I think Tactical Marines are going to work better here, because we want to save some points to actually spend on the monstrous creatures. So we're just going to go for some, it could be Mark III, it could be Mark IV, as you all know, um, Tactical Marines are Tactical Marines, regardless of the source. So let's get a couple of squads of Tactical Marines in there. Give us our basic two troops choices. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, now we can take uh, some other stuff. So we'll go for some Darkfire Castellax with the Pravian. Now this is probably going to be like a two and a half, three thousand point list, by the way, guys. So one, two, three, and really these guys are going to be able to also. So I'm going to big arrow. Be able to do the job. Of killing tanks and they're really going to get buffed by that legion pravian so awesome choice to pair them up together now the legion pravian the tech marine and the iron father are all going to be helping out with things like cortex controllers and uh, cyber familiars and such giving you a bit of um a bit of control over the tabletop now into our non-compulsory troops let's get some castellax so it gives us another uh, scoring unit. We'll go a couple with um, more pattern bolt cannons, I think. So that'll be one unit there. Separate out our squads. So now we're up to at least three scoring units, although the Castellacs are a non-compulsory uh, troops choice in the Brethren of Iron. Now, you must have one Cortex Control per three Battle Automata units. The ones at the Pravian do not count as Battle Automata unit. Therefore, we have up to nine we can fit into this list right here. Now, that Master of the Forge, I'm going to back him up, I think. We will stick some Vorax into Fast Attack. So, these Vorax are going to be doing some light anti-tank duties. But mostly they're going to be hanging around the killing enemy infantry slash heavy infantry. So it takes six of those bad boys in there as a unit. Then we want something that's going to be able to take on our monstrous creatures and such. So we need to be looking at something like a Domitar for this job. So Domitar, we can take them as an elite's choice. Yes, they can kill Terminators. But I find Domitar actually quite tanky, so we'll get... A full unit of three of those in. 
Remembering these guys will absolutely munch any sort of vehicles they come across. It is what they are best at. Uh, even a Dreadnought. If you have an enemy Dreadnought, try and con the thing into charging you if it has to happen. Because you have uh, 2d3 haywire hits per Domitar when they get charged, which is awesome Overwatch power. Um, then we're going to back the Tech Marine uh, himself. The Master of the Forge Tech Marine, that is. I'm just going to pick some Silax Guardian Automata, but they're not actually Silax. So these guys are going to be Servitor with Rad Missiles. So this is giving us a bit of an anti-horde unit, um, firing four small blast Fleshbane uh, AP3 weapons is really good. Uh, and also remembering they're going to be counting as having that additional toughness point, uh, sort of, thanks to being Iron Hand, so any shooting that's directed at them will be at a minus one modifier. So now with the list, we have our Vorax, we have our Castellax, we have our Domitar. Now we could add more Vorax in, we could add more Domitar in, we could add more Castellax in. But uh, I think with this many units already, We've already really polluted the area of monsters creatures, and we don't want to spread our cortex control as too thin. So you could go the direction of adding more tech marines, and even going rad missile spam on the tech marines, but I think doing more than one unit of it's not really keeping in the spirit of the game. So you want to do something now that is going to be a little bit of survivability, some more objective carrying, because again, thinking sort of around that 3,000 points mark. So let's get some Gorgon Pattern Terminators in here. So again, heavy infantry, but it's also something five to ten of them. So we'll say just five or ten to act as a bit of a bodyguard unit for the actual Master of the Legion, the uh, Iron Father, because we don't want him to just get picked off. The tactical squads, they're just hanging around the back lines, holding on to objectives. The regular Castellacs here, you can send them forward to try and capture an objective forward because you want to keep those Cortex controllers moving forwards. The only Cortex controller that's going to be sitting in the back line is the guy hanging out with the Rad Missile Servitors. So to top this list off, we have an option of units we can take. Uh, we could definitely take aircraft in this, something like a Xiphon or a Fury uh, or a Lightning. Any of those sort of aircraft would be really good. We're actually going to go something a lot more simple. We're going to go the Derrideo Dreadnought. We're going to add him in. He's going to be able to perform the anti-tank or anti-flyer role. Um, but his job, yeah, is, it's basically just to kill aircraft and help out with that. Uh, being a Dreadnought uh, means that we can use the Iron Father or Tech Marine servo arms to try and perform repairs on this guy. So, yeah, that is a Brethren of Iron list. And the only other thing I would consider adding to this list would be a heavy support option. And I don't know if I have a picture of them in here. I do. We're in luck. Because uh, I think there's a lot of versatility to be gained from them. So let's look at getting some Thalax in here. Uh, so what we do with the Thalax and what job we allocate them to, we're probably going to be using them as just sort of an objective denial, uh, a bit of a harassment unit, maybe with a phase plasma fusel or a photon thruster. Uh, depending if you want to use them more towards that sort of light medium anti-tank or killing that heavy infantry or keep them with the uh, lightning guns targeting regular power armor. But yeah, that will pretty much be a uh, Brethren of Iron list for the Iron Hands. So let's reset the clock and look at our next force that someone wants to see. So let's see, Brethren of Iron, Scouring Force is a bit more difficult, so I'll, I'll put off a Scouring Aerith Force, I think, for another time. A Loyalist version of a Traitor Legion. You know, I'm going to do a Loyalist Death Guard, and I want to include that new Death Guard unit into it, because I think that'll be a lot of fun. So let's start with, we don't need a Rite of War. We can, we can do two different forces here. I'm going to start with a Zone Mortalis force, because I think 
that'd be quite a bit of fun. Now, Zone Mortalis, it's really good to have something like a Tactical Support Squad because they provide scoring unit. But you don't need a Tactical Support Squad in Zone Mortalis. So we're going to take a squad of Death Shroud. So the Death Shroud we can take as a HQ option in a uh, Death Guard company. You can actually take as few as two Death Shroud, which is actually very point sufficient. And you're getting two guys, basically, that are the equivalent of a Centurion. They're roughly the same stats as Space Marine Centurion Consul. But without having to go down the route of actually getting a Space Marine Centurion Consul. So it frees up some options there. Uh, you could also take them as a bodyguard, I believe, to a Master of the Legion or such. Anyway, uh, so tactical support squads. We are going to use a regular Space Marine squad here. And we're going to say that that is the new Poisoner squad. And we're going to give them just two by heavy flamers. Because in Zone Mortalis, this unit will really come into its own with the hardened armor. I don't think they need the flamers. Uh, that amount of fi flamers is just going to be overkill against something they can hurt. So I think just bolt guns really will probably be perfectly acceptable. Gives you a bit more range as well. So if you're around the corner and your enemy is, uh, say, more than eight inches away, your flamers aren't going to be able to hit them. So it gives you a little bit of reaching power when you're around the corner that you can put some hurt down. Uh, on top of that, let's get some breaches into this because we want someone who can actually cap and hold objectives. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I'm pretty sure that Death Shroud, let's double check, uh, Death Shroud can actually hold objectives because I believe the Death Shroud have the uh, Implacable Advance special rule. Just having a look now. Well, I can't see it off the top of my head. But anyway, I think Death Shroud have the Implacable Advance special rule. So let's get some breaches into here as our main scoring unit in the force. So the Poisoners are going to be there as a bit of a harassment unit. They can't be left alone, even though they're not a scoring unit. When they do come on, they'll have a couple of Chem Heavy Flamers. So Shredding Heavy Flamers is pretty nasty. And with the hardened armor and the rag grenades, they'll hit pretty hard. If they're going into combat with the Death Shroud, yeah, the, the two units will actually complement one another very nicely. Now, what else might help this force? Uh, probably time for a Contempted Dreadnought, to be honest. What will you arm the Contempted Dreadnought with? Uh, great question. Two Assault Cannons is pretty fun, but I think in the tight confines of Zone Mortalis... This Dreadnought is going to be pulling double duties, killing Dreadnoughts, killing any heavy infantry. I don't think shooting is really the way to go. So let's go thematic here. I would say probably a Siege Wrecker or Chain Fist for the 2d6 armor penetration against vehicles uh, so we can kill other Dreadnoughts. Also the regular Power Fist or Dreadnought Close Combat Weapon. So you're getting those maximum potential amount of attacks on the charge. And in the hands, just to keep with the theme, let's go to um, Heavy Flamers with the special uh, Death Guard Shredding Ammunition. Now this here is a perfectly legal loyalist force for the Death Guard, for Zone Mortalis. And you can just sort of um, kit it out with a few little bonuses, like throw maybe something like an Apothecary in, that could be fun. Uh, even a Vigilator console might be a good choice in here as well. So consider that some options that are available to you. Now, let's pretend we are doing a Death Guard force for on the regular tabletop in your regular sort of matches. What do we want to do here? Well, we'll keep that Poisoned Heavy Flamer squad, and in fact, I think we'll take two of them. And we're going to supplement these guys with... Going through my list, let's get some Terax Pattern Termites in there. Very thematic for it to come out of the ground. So one for one squad, one for the other squad. Cool. 
We'll keep the Death Shroud as well because we want a bodyguard to our console. So we we'll take a Legion Praetor here. Ignore the uh, the guy in power armor. So we'll just chop him out of the image. There you go. They'll form bodyguard unit to that guy. Now again, don't have to take these guys in huge numbers. You can take them as just two. So let's do that. Let's cut away most of these death shroud. So we just got the two death shroud. Now let's supplement them with something that's very uh, thematic. We're going to go and get a land raider and I think an Achilles alpha would really be the land raider of choice for this force. So where is land raiders in my little list of units off to the side here? So we'll go on Achilles Alpha. Even though I really like the anti-infantry option of the Volkites, this is going to be carrying the Praetor and his two Death Shroud. So let's say that's an Achilles Alpha. With Multi-Melter. And Phosphex Quad. So we've now used up one of our heavy support choices, but this one's pulling double duty and actually using its six transport capacity to transport our headquarters unit. So pretty cool there. We'll give them a little star just to note that they're uh, in that unit. Okay, just to help keep track of everything we're doing, guys. So of course, if we want to take those Phosphex rounds, we're going to need to take a Siege Breaker. So I'll pick the... Uh, Pravian console model is our siege breaker. Handy little chap. And because he has uh, the ability to grant tank hunters, we're probably going to include some quad rapiers as well. So when it comes to quad rapiers so we'll go a full unit of three and these ones will be pulling double duty actually no we'll just go the two we'll go the two he'll attach this squad to buff them we're not going to go for the phosphex rounds at least not initially in this list although i'll leave that up to other people to decide it will definitely increase their killing power against infantry he will grant tank hunters to the unit. That means that the uh, quad shell is going to have far more chance with the, I think it's shatter shells, at actually punching through armor. So there's some light anti tank there, and that's taking up the elite slot. Now let's look down into our heavy support. So being Death Guard, I think we need to fill out the heavy support more. What options have we got available? Uh, we've got some decent anti infantry starting to come into this force. Let's get some really powerful anti tank in there. Uh, let's take something different. Let's go the Dimos Laser Vindicator. So primary job of this, and we'll make it a unit of two, not three. Uh, three is definitely better, but two will work just fine. And these are going to be pulling double duty to a lesser degree, killing heavy infantry, killing Terminators, because they can put out a lot of Strength 9 AP2 shots. And then I think the last thing we want to include in this force is... We'll probably go a, another Derrideo Dreadnought. You notice they're making into one of these lists. That's because I think they're incredibly underrated. So that'll be our third uh, heavy support choice. We could, uh, actually just for the sake of being something different, it'll die as soon as the game starts because people hate these things. But let's put a Sicker and Arcus in there as an anti-air option. Cool. So the Death Shroud and the Legion Praetor who are hanging out together in that Achilles Alpha, they can take on uh, enemy units and kill them. Something like Templar Brethren can't really hurt them, but they can definitely kill that Templar Brethren unit. 
Cool. Um, just note that that is a siege breaker. And that he, with his little symbol, is going to be hanging out with them, with their little symbol. Now, Sigranarchus, yeah, it is target number one, but we'll give it anti-air missiles. So it can perform the anti-air role. It'll also perform some more anti-tanks. This army is brutal on the anti-tank front. The termites here are delivering the poisonous squads. Now, you could use a tactical support squad in this role, true, uh, but a tactical support squad's not going to have the rag grenades or the hardened armor. So the whole point of taking the poisoners in this instance is going to be they're going to pop up in the enemy back lines and they have to be dealt with. And they're going to be a little bit harder to kill than it would be to kill a regular squad of tactical marines, just down to the fact that they have hardened armor and rad grenades and counterattack. If you charge them, they're going to hurt you and you can't leave them alone in your back lines. So they're going to be a really annoying unit and we'll supplement them with some apothecaries. Now for the rest of the force, let's get some scoring into there. And really, I think this is a pretty simple one. For our scoring, we just need to stock up on tactical space marines at this point. So, one, two, three squads, tactical space marines. Now, since you've already got a couple of termites, it might be worth investing in something like some rhinos to just add a little bit of mobility to this force, because this force is... It's relatively mobile, actually especially taking the Sikorin over the uh, Derideo. So I think at least one of these squads, if not two of them, should be mounted in Rhinos just for the flexibility. And that leaves you with one unit of tactical Marines to hang around the back line, uh, just capturing objectives. So yeah, that's a cool little Death Guard army right there. And again, perfectly playable as Loyalists. So keep that in mind when it comes to creating Death Guard force. And yeah, like I said, Poisoner Squad, uh, you could add someone to the Poisoner Squad, like a Siege Breaker with a Combi Melter to give them anti-tank or something, but I think it's just a waste of the Siege Breaker. I don't think you would gain much from putting a Chaplain with them. I think it's simple Apothecary, put the Poisoners in a Termite, pop them up in the enemy backline turn one, and just start hosing things down with fire. They don't even all need to be armed with Flamers. Put a mix of bolt guns in there, it won't hurt. All right. What is next on the list? Just clear the board again. Clear the board of Legion units. So we've done Brethren of Iron, we've done that. World Eater slash Word Bearer Shadow Crusade. Okay, that could be a bit of fun. So were bearers allied in as the, or facing forcing sort of the uh forming the main component of the army is going to be the tough choice and do you make it a a world eaters uh specific force or do we go for a sort of um word bearers related force mm, this is a tough one you could also go Shattered Legions. It depends if you want to include the Primarchs or not. Shattered Legions is a tough one, though, because you start having all these shenanigans occurring where really broken, overpowered combos that no one thought up start to come into play. Let's go... Let's go right down the middle. Uh, we'll go a Shattered Legion. So the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need a HQ for each side. Uh, with the Shattered Legion, a lot of the normal restrictions don't apply, so that's going to make it easier for us, but it's still not going to be easy. So we'll need a World Eater commander in there of some kind. So let's get a, a character for the World Eaters. And we're going to need a champion or such for the Turd Bearers. Uh, sorry, it'll be a chaplain. So let's say and a champion for the world eaters. Okay, so we've got two different legions present, so we're already starting to uh, fill out our minimum requirements, which is a good thing. So 
we're going to take a squad of Mark IV Space Marines for each. So, I'm going to make this a little bit easy to keep track of. World Eater and Word Bearer over there. Move this body box. Okay. So we're going to try and uh, put some sort of line down the middle of this body table of what legion is, is going with what unit here. And have a bit of fun with it. All right. Because they're a lot of fun, I think we should add in some of the new crazy uh, assault units that they've got. So I'll use red uh, rampages to represent the new destroyer squad of the world eaters. And I also want to include some of the... Where have they gone? in my list. I want the word bearers ashen circle in here. It's the problem with having a list of like a hundred units to pick from. It's very easy to lose something when you're quickly skimming over them looking for the one you want. I did find them though. So both these units are going to be pulling mostly killing anti-heavy infantry sort of tactics on the table. So we're already using up a couple of elite slots right there. Let's now supplement them. I want to get some killing power into this force. So we'll get some red butchers into the force. And they're going to be pulling the old... Uh, Double duty. Get these guys on the word bearers side of things. One or two squads. Uh, tough call. Let's let's go with one for now, because I'm making this a very mirror match force, which is not a common thing you'd see. And we want to put them in a land raider with an assault ramp so they can charge straight out of that bad boy. So that's going to use up the first of our heavy support slots right there. So now let's supplement the force with a little bit more heavy support, or a lot more heavy support. Let's get a punisher in there. And let's get a hmm. Let's get some Vindicators in there. Something that can kill tanks and heavy infantry and let the rest of this force sort of go to town. For anti-aircraft duties, let's get some uh, let's go for a lightning here, and we'll get this under the word bearers umbrella. So let's be hanging around in fast attack, uh, with a secondary role being to um, kill vehicles for that bad boy. So secondary role for him killing vehicles, secondary role for this guy's anti-tank here, and secondary role for these boys is... Okay, so we're mostly leaning towards the... Uh, word bearers side of things with this force. So what else can we add in here? Uh, sorry, with the world eaters side of this force is taking up most of the units. Let's get something else in for the word bearers. And we could go a dreadnought with the twin curious assault cannons, or we double down on the theme of my my thinking with this theme is this is like a demolition, smash and book burn force, which is why I've gone for the uh, this is the World Eater Special Destroyers. The Red Hands. Uh... 
yeah, I think doubling down on that book burning theme, let's get some tactical support marines in here for the word bearers. Much less common uh, in armies. You don't see huge amounts of these guys, but get a squad in and we'll give them flamers. Cool, and that's a Shattered Legion force for our World Eaters. Uh, and the only thing I think I'd add to this at this point is something to act as a bodyguard for the World Eaters champion, because if he dies, then the, the army's going to revert to distrusted allies. So probably worth giving him a, a relatively tanky bodyguard, but being World Eaters, you're going to win a lot of combats, so you want to have a squad that's able to chase down when they win a combat. So... Maybe we look at something like a Terminator squad. Give us a bit of scoring and he can go into them. They can be a bodyguard unit for him. That will help out immensely with his survivability. There you go. Shattered Legion right there. And leaning heavily to the World Eaters uh, side of that. Alright, what else have I got in the armies that people wanted? Hmm, tough, tough ones. Most of the lists that are in here have either been covered before or I've done them myself. You can have a pretty fun one here. Okay, so let's, we're going to go a Fury of the Ancients list now. So really super uncommon uh, list right here. So we need a Master of the Legion to unlock it. We'll need a Master of the Forge as well. And we need a Primus Medicae. It's one of those lists. So Master of the Forge... Primus Medicae. And some sort of guy to unlock it. I think we'll go for someone really out of the box for this one. Let's go for a Thousand Suns one. This is a list I wanted to make or something similar to this. So I never got the opportunity to finish it off, but I thought it was going to be pretty damn kick-ass. So we've got Dreadnoughts, Dreadnoughts, and Dreadnoughts. I want to have... I don't even have a picture of one in this list, but I want a box Boxnaught. In fact, I want three box Dreadnoughts. So to show that they're box Dreadnoughts, even though I don't have them in this list, I'm going to pick the Leviathan, and we're going to squash him down. One, two, three... So this is three box dreads with missiles plus hunter killer missiles. So really strong anti-tank. These are like the uh, the mortis type. They're going to give us anti-tank and anti-heavy infantry. So we'll supplement this now. I want something that's going to kill heavy infantry especially. We're going to take three Castellacs. We can take a Cortex Controller on the guy in the um, Mark III Terminator armor. Oh, sorry, the, the, the Tech Marine, Master the Forge. Um, we're going to say this is Castellax Achaia. With Ether Fire. Now let's take some Contempt of Dreadnoughts. Let's get two of these in as troops choices. 
So we've got our compulsory troops. Due by contempt uh, with Volkites. So both of these guys with the heavy Volkites. So there's eight of the strength six AP five deflagrate shots per dreadnought popping out. Uh, this is not a single talent. This is two separate talents. Same as these three boys are also um, like a, the mortis option. Then we're going to go with a Assyrians. So I reckon we can get we get three Assyrians in this force. With force weapons, grav and fist. So these are our punchy boys. And the only thing left for this force, um, we've got excellent anti-aircraft in the form of these uh, these mortis dreadnoughts. So these guys are pulling triple duties right here. The box dreadnoughts are actually uh, they're performing both anti-tank, anti-infantry, anti-plane. Um, they do it all. Jack of all trades. We could, if we go up in points even more on this force, could look at adding in Leviathans or Derridos into this force. Um, but you're basically there. Uh, with the main squad of HQs, I'd also look at probably adding a unit of Sekhmet Terminators to those main HQs. Uh, especially as your points goes up. Uh, Segments, two wounds each, psychic terminators, a lot of survivability to be had there. Especially if they go for the telekinesis cult, so plus one the invol saves, three up invol save, get all these guys into a single squad. Uh, make it have a lot of survivability, and it'll have a lot of hitting power as well, so you can not be afraid of moving it up the board. And backing them with the Castle Axakea. And the Assyrians are going to be something special for this force because they have force weapons. They can kill any monstrous creature, greater demon, demons of the ruined storm. They're going to be absolutely terrifying. The only stuff that's going to be able to sort of take a charge from one of those is going to be something which has uh, eternal warrior. Because otherwise they're going to cop force to the face. And that is my suggestion. Use the actual force ability on them. Don't try and... Uh, armor Syrians with you know one single guns they can do a bit of shooting because it's got one assault it's too many points save the points keep your soul fist so yeah definitely uh, a crazy ride of war this one but really nasty list actually that one I think that is I'm not gonna say tournament winner but it's it's up there it is definitely up there so yeah okay oh well, I reckon that's enough list for today uh, I'll definitely do more of these. This is just a bonus video on top of the other stuff we make. So I think I'm on Archcast tomorrow, which will be fun. Uh, something different. And uh, hopefully, hopefully I'll have a review video coming next. But anyway, back with the Outer Circle. Hope you enjoyed some more list building. And I'll see you all on the next one.